Hi everyone. Okay, so here's my next video in which I am going to be finally disclosing which power cord was which power cord from my previous video. There's been a lot of conversation, lots of talk about, you know, whether number one is Audio Mica or Odin or, you know, Dragon, you know, Audio Quest. And I know most of you are very eager to find out. What I can say to you is, it's been quite an experiment for me as well. It's been really an incredible amount of fun, um, but at the same time, confusion. And why do I say confusion is because when you change a component out, sometimes two things can happen. Either you went forward in terms of, you know, improving on resolution, bass, uh, vocals, transparency, articulation, or you went backwards in all those categories. There's no guarantee as to what will happen. As you know, every cable is really, really um, just an additional component of your system. I have been playing for the last four or five days with the Dragon High Current power cord and uh, the audio mic has been with me for about a month or two now in addition to that before i go and tell everyone what power cord was what power cord and my thoughts i want to say that i also just decided to bring home as you know <clears throat> i have the right now i have the dcs up sampler in there which is really has been it has made guys a tremendous amount of improvement on my um, DCS deck. I can tell you that the digital feeling that the presentation has when you use the deck directly into the Coliseum is vanished. It's completely gone. I don't hear any of that. It became a lot more analog. Those of you who are contemplating to buy a DCS Vivaldi deck and you want to use it as a preamplifier, do not skip the purchase of the upsampler. It's a huge mistake. Okay? If all you can afford is the DAC, you better have a preamplifier. Okay? Do not try to use it straight into the amplifier as a preamplifier because I really do, did not like the results. I felt it was a little too forward, a little, yes, too bright at times, a lot of resolution. A lot of clarity. I'm not going to say it doesn't have that. It has that in spades. Um, but it can get a little edgy. Okay? At least in my system. I want to make that clear. I'm not sure about yours, but in my, my own experience is that. Biggest pro the biggest help was the render. Huge help. Okay? So, I'm going to give my impression soon on that. Um, I'm still playing with the, you know, the render W20SE. And uh, I wanted to tell everyone that I am going to also be measuring something else. So, here we go. Hurricane. This is the Hurricane High Current against the Dragon High Current. $9,500 for a 2 meter. And I believe this is about roughly $2,500 for a 2 meter. So we are talking almost four times the price, guys, between one and the other. I want to be able to hear it for myself. I want to play with both and figure out what I like best and what in my system, what I think is, is best um, and be able to report back to you all. Okay. I know some of you might be asking me as you see this, what the hell is this underneath the DAWs? All right. So this is, uh, is me playing with, it's a little experimentation I have with the speaker right now. I want to raise it up a little higher. And this is just something that Wilson Audio recommended I do before I spend money on platforms and getting all crazy and fancy. You know, they recommend it to get the speaker a little higher by a couple, a couple of inches with two by fours just to see how the tonality and the presentation changes because I, I, am, I am a believer that, and if you see this, look at my, see that seating area? I'm a little higher. I'm about 10 inches higher off the ground. So that essentially puts me right where the tweeter in the mid-range is. And sometimes that can come a little too forward for me. 
when I crank up the volume, I want to be clear, okay? When I crank it up fairly loud, things can become a little too much. In, I would say not too in your face, but just a little bite or shoutiness that occurs in certain music. So Wilson said to me, before I play with the resistors on the back of the component, before I swap out any of these things here, in case some of you don't know what I'm talking about, these are the resistors that come. Before I do any of that, they recommended that I raise the speakers a little higher, a couple of inches off the ground with a couple of two by fours to see if that puts me a little more where I need to be with the speaker. And I have done that maybe 30 minutes ago. I'm still playing with him. I do find that the bottom end gain a whole new layer. Um, I, I almost, they almost now sound probably as big as the Alexius did. I mean, it, it was incredible what that did for that speaker. Just raising that speaker two inches changed a lot on the speaker okay but anyway more to come on that um in addition to that let me see what else what other updates i have um no and and i'm pretty just excited to try that oh before i forget yeah i also bought these which i am going to be bought the valhalla they already are installed in the system so these are the aes digital i bought two of them because you need two to connect the, you need two of these in order to connect the up sampler to the DAC. Okay, so these are the Valhalla 2 AES interconnects. So I have two of those already installed in the system. So my intention after this shootout, cable shootout, will be to do the following, okay? I am going to do the Dragon HC against the Hurricane HC on the amplifier but in addition to that i am also going to keep hurricanes on the dac and the up sampler so i'm going to put hurricane high current power cores on those two in order to in order to keep as much audio quest keep power cores as possible to make hopefully this exercise a little easier okay the only thing i'm going to keep on the rest of the cable as far as the rest of the cables will be odin of course as speaker cables and Odin as interconnects. That's basically it, okay? And the Valhalla, of course, as the AES on the DAC. Okay, so more to come on that. I know a lot of you would love to hear this set, this, com this, this comparison between these two cables to hear really what each one does over the other. Is the Dragon really worth four times the amount? Is it not? Maybe is it the Hurricane really the, 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 the jack of all trades, the cable that it's great bang for the buck, great price performance ratio. Uh, it gives you, is it going to give you as much as the dragon will? Maybe 90%. I don't know, guys. We will, we will see on one of my next videos. So stay tuned for that. And with that said, we are about to, I am going to disclose what cable was what cable. All right. So. Number one was the Nordos Odin. Yes, Nordos Odin was cable number one. If you missed it, if you hated it, food for thought. That's all I'm gonna tell you, food for thought. If you hated or you loved it, you need to answer yourself that, you need to answer that question for yourself, why that was. Either, you know, maybe you like the next two, the other two cables better, maybe you don't. Okay, but that's what I wanted. I wanted to give you guys these results without you guys knowing what was playing. Okay, number two, Audio Mica. Yes, that leaves number three for the Audio Quest Dragon High Current. Okay, there you have it. A lot of the comments that I have read below on my previous video have been people who, re who are really loving number three presentation number three um some of you actually swore that the worst presentation was the odin and you attributed and you thought odin was actually i believe number two i've seen that too actually you know what odin is the cable you were loving but a lot of you got it wrong and i'm glad actually that you guys got it wrong because now you can go back to the video and hear what cable you really loved and why what are my impressions Let's start with the Odin one. Number one thing that the Odin one power cord does 
at least in my system with the rest of course being Odin, uh, nor does Odin, is a level of detail that moves from left to right that almost gives you a feeling that you're listening to class A, which I am, but class A at all times, regardless of the amplification you use. It feels like the Odin power cord has this ability of just melting music out of your tweeter. It, it, things just begin to literally crawl out of the tweeter. That's the biggest thing that I can feel with the Odin. Now, I am not going to lie to you guys, to you guys. In my rig sometimes was getting a little more a little more bite than I wanted. It, it, the, the, the presentation bit a couple of times. Um, and again, I don't know if this is due to the fact that the, um, you know, that the DAWs are a little lower than they should be. Um, I don't know yet, guys. I'm, I'm just reporting what I'm hearing. Um, however, there is a level of liveliness that the Odin power core has that, in my opinion, continues to still be king. King, king of the road when it comes to the lively feeling, when it comes to the, how fast it is. It sounds very fast. It never sounds sluggish. Um, the bass is always controlled, although I would say is leaner than the audio mic as bottom end control. Um, but overall, I mean, the cable, let me tell you something for, for, for the Odin one being as old as it is. And I believe it's probably 10 to 12 years old already since it came out. It continues to still beat on a lot of new offerings. I mean, it continues to still put a lot of cable power cores to sleep. I mean, that's really, really an impressive thing from, uh, from Nordos, if you ask me, you know, um, a lot of, a lot of other cable manufacturers are still trying to take down the Odin. I mean, the reality is that they're trying to get to the Odin level and refine it even more. And that's very hard to do. Okay. Number two, audio mica. Number one thing I, I felt about audio mica was the muscularity. Uh, when I removed the Odin and I put the audio mica, I felt there was more muscle i felt the the wax of the drums were a little more pronounced the presentation did relax a little more so there wasn't as much bite or resolution but i mean don't get me wrong there is still resolution but in comparison to the king of resolution which is the odin it isn't as it doesn't have the amount of resolution and that could be a great thing if your system let's say con consists of a beryllium tweeter or or maybe you know a horn or a speaker that doesn't need extra liveliness right that could be a great cable for that because it adds musicality it adds control on the bottom end um and it still remains very in my opinion i wouldn't say it's a, it's slower than the odin um but sometimes it's a good thing because it never really gets in your face believe it or not i never felt like the audio mica got in your face when you cranked it up i never felt that it really I never felt that it really made me turn down the volume, if that makes any sense. It never did that for me. Okay, but if you're if you're addicted to liveliness, if you're addicted to this feeling that you're there, I I, I just think that Odin still has it, still wins in that regard. And then the final cable is the AudioQuest Dragon High Current. All right, what's my take on that? Um, number one was a huge soundstage. I mean, I remember the sound stages opened up more with the with the audio quest i would say it even opens up more than with the odin so yes guys for those of you who are you know contemplating either cable i will say right now if you have a speaker that just needs a little more spaciousness uh if you want to feel like the walls came down a little bit in your setup you you want to go with the dragon that's going to be the cable that's going to give you that. It's going to give you a lot more spaciousness. It's going to give you, you're going to have resolution. Um, I actually mentioned to a good friend of mine that I felt like the dragon gave you resolution without being too forward or a little too energetic. That's the best way to describe it. It didn't have as much energy as the Odin, but it still kept you there and it still gave you plenty of resolution, plenty of imaging um, and control. The bottom end was there as well. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, you know, it's all really system dependent, to be quite honest. I, If I were to pick my number one cable, 
guys, this is if I were to pick it, if I had to, if I was in a position where I needed to keep a cable with what I have here in this room. And and this was my rig until I, I'm I'm gone, you know, from this planet. What power core would I keep? I'm probably gonna go with the Odin. And here's why I would go with the Odin. When I'm doing work here, seated at night, and I'm on my laptop, you know, looking at things, and I play music at low volume, this sparkle and sizzle that comes out of the Odin is unreal. Like it, it, it just it, sometimes it just makes me pick my head up and look at the speakers because I almost feel like the tweeters are like going off in all sorts of direction, and I hear things behind my head that the Odin is capable of doing. But again, I will say that if your recordings are bright if the rest of your system isn't really the greatest if you really have anything in there that has any a hint of brightness the odin will expose that and so that's one thing that i would say i hate why do i say i hate most of you are going to say well why if that's really what you have uh, because you know the reality is sometimes you want to sit down and enjoy what you have and if i have to start chasing down components that don't give me brightness or forwardness or whatever you want to call it jesus i could be here till you know the rest of my life trying to find a component you know so but i do like i will say to you guys the dragon is no joke i mean i i can tell you right now it is really really something that i was very very impressed by uh, considering that's 9500 msrp um, it's an amazing power cord. I mean, I would say that if I didn't have an Odin right now, I would have no problem having a Dragon High Current as my backup or as my, 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 uh, my, my other go-to cable. I mean, I would have zero reservations, you know, um, because it's that great. It's really good. Only thing I hate about it is, you know, $9,500 for those connectors that are plastic. They feel like, you know, they're not really at the level of an Odin or even at the level of an Audio Mica, which is only half the which is half the price. That's a little disappointing, I think. I hope AudioQuest can see this video. To me, it's unacceptable that they're gonna charge $9,500 for a power cord that looks identical to the high current. I mean, literally identical. Same connectors, okay? It, there's really no difference when you look at them or, 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 or even weight is the same. So for me, that's a little unacceptable. If you ask me to have the same connectors that the plastic feeling, you know, that's something that I, if you're going to charge ninety five hundred dollars, man, you're 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 targeting the big ballers, right? You're trying you're tra targeting the big heavy hitters. And, and when it comes to power, when it comes to cabling. And I think that's the only thing I can say to AudioQuest is step up your game with with the construction of your cables. Those connectors are garbage. I mean, they really are garbage, you know, I, Compared to the nine thousand dollar power cords out there, you know the Shinada Omega that are beautiful looking. You're looking at some of the other you know contenders out there that you it just puts you behind. Now, that's me nitpicking about the aesthetics. Okay, it has nothing to do with the performance. The cable delivers. There's no question about it. There's no snake oil on the AudioQuest cable. I can tell you right now. I never believed in AudioQuest before. I thought it was a Best Buy brand. It still is actually. I thought it was just you know. It's for, you know, the low end, you know, maybe even mid fi audiophile person. Um, but this is my first rodeo with the new stuff. And I got to tell you, man, this brings it. There is nothing wrong now with what they're putting out when it comes to power cords. It's really respectable. Performance is there. Uh, the quality in terms of the, the sound is there. It's all there. Um, so it, it really has me shocked. To say the least, that this cable came in and did what it did. Yes. Do I like it more than the Audio Mica? I do. I do like it more than the Audio Mica um, simply because it is It is also, you know what it feels like? It feels like it really is in the middle of the Audio Mica and the uh, Nordus Odin. Because it has resolution, not to the extreme of the Odin, but it has resolution. Don't get me wrong, it does. But it has more muscle than the Odin. The bottom end is a lot. A, a, a lot big, a, a tight. I would say deeper here in my room, and the sound stage is way bigger than the Odin. Okay, so it has a little bit of both of the Audio Micas, Audio Micas muscularity, and it has the the detail of the Odin. Okay, but it doesn't do it at the extreme levels that both of those cables do it. Okay, I have. I am telling you right now, the shock is going to be right there. That's going to be the shock. I feel. 
that that comparison could either make it or break it for for AudioQuest when it comes to me. Um, I know some of you have the, your reservations. I mean, some of you have even com commented that you had dragons, but you felt like you know the hurricane was better um, in your system, and because it added less you know brightness, and it, you felt that the dragon was bright or it gave you a little too much bite. Um, and that's fine. That's system dependent. We know that. Um, and some of you prefer the hurricane over the dragon. I know I've heard a lot of that. You know, well, I'm about to find out pretty soon here when I do a shootout um, between those two power cords and figure out who's who's what. Can I really hear a difference or there's really no difference? And somebody just decided to jack up the price and change the color of the power cord. Uh, you know, and that that's what we need to find out. Um, what else is what am I thinking about down the pipeline? I'm thinking um, of bringing probably another amplifier. I'm a little dry with amplification right now. I don't have any any real amps that I want to try at this very moment. There isn't really something that catches my attention. I would love to have uh, you know a pair of uh, you know Griffin monoblocks here, but uh, the reality is that's not going to happen anytime soon. I was thinking of venturing with other brands of amplification. I don't want to try tubes. I've already mentioned that I'm done with tubes for the time being. I'm not saying that I won't if, if I have an opportunity, but I don't want to. If I can avoid them, I will just avoid tubes for the time being and, um, and just continue to do pure solid state. OK. Um, yeah, so I will keep you guys posted more videos to come. I appreciate everything and your time. And now let the discussion begin. Give me your thoughts below. I want to know what you guys thought. Odin 1, cable number 1, Audio Micah, cable number 2, and the Dragon from Audio Quiz was cable number 3. I hope you guys are shocked with you what you selected. Figure out why you selected it and what you liked about it. Now it's going to give you the opportunity to get out there and bring it, in, bring it home for your system and audition it in your own home. Please subscribe, guys. Thank you so much for your time, and um, until the next one.